Hi guys, Hedia here, and today I wanted to make a quick video on the Linux file system. The Linux file system is a structure in which all information on your computer is stored. It's one of the defining properties of a Unix system in which Linux is based, that nearly everything you need to identify in your system, the data, the commands, the symbolic links, the devices connected, the directories, are all represented by items and file systems. So knowing where things are and understanding how to get around the file system is pretty critical in using Linux and they're basically organized in hierarchical directories so for example if I want to like just go to my uh, documents directory or my music it's basically inside the uh, let me click on a property here so it's basically inside my root which is the forward slash then my home directory and then Hedia and then pictures so it's within the root directory inside that so the file system here is the root directory as known by the forward slash on top, then home, then Hedia, and then my pictures directory. So that's how I would get to that directory. Everything starts from the root directory, which is the file system directory right here. And let me just get started on how the hierarchy works and what, where, and what everything is. So the root directory is the uh, root, it's the m most vital directory it has everything that you would need that your Linux system needs to run so let's get started the bin directory the first one this is where most of your binary files are stored which is your Linux terminal commands and core utilities so for example let me just show you one also mixer for audio control um, where else there is apt yeah apt config and uh, the apt command that I use in my CLI commands all of that is stored in the bin directory so it's your basic functions for your Linux system it contains the common Linux user commands such as ls sort date and chmod then after that is the boot directory which contains grub it has the bootable Linux kernel the RAM in it and the bootloader which is your grub directory. So if you wanted to manage multiple operating systems on your device or if you want to dual boot, you would modify the grub config file in the grub directory inside boot in order to make that work. CD-ROM, if you have a CD player or a Blu-ray drive, the files for that would be stored in CD-ROM. I don't, so it's empty. And then beyond that we have the uh, dev folder which is where our physical devices are mounted such as your hard drives, USB drives, and CPU and all that. So yeah, CPU, microcode, disk management, mapper, VFIO, networking, the bus, all of that. However, in more recent Linux kernels, the... like for example, under my devices I have other hard drives. They are not stored in the dev. They're not stored here in dev. They're stored in mount or media. In the case of media, right now it's just Hedia, but if I were to install a USB drive, it would show up in media. Or if not media, then in mount, because after, after you mount the drive, it should show up in mount. But dev has like your uh, hardware microcode and stuff, so it's pretty important here. Yeah, it has the uh, dev again, it has the files representing access points to your system, your RAM, your hard disk, terminal devices. CPU and you can modify these since these are files however you need to be a root user to do that and you know if you do it wrong it could break your system so don't do that unless you know what you're doing. The ETC folder contains administration administrative configuration files which most of these are plain text files so if you have you know if you go in there you can modify a lot of configuration systems on your system so yeah, it has configuration files for all the uh, applications and commands, so the apt command, my chromium browser, app armor, cron jobs, cups printer server, firefox, emacs, well I don't have emacs, gnu cache, gnome, gimp, etc, etc. You can all modify the uh, files for that here. Yeah, you can do that here. Home, Hedia, and then from there I can just access my computer, all those files. Library, Library32, Library64, and Library x 32 
Since I have a 64-bit system, library 32 and x32 are empty, so if I were to install any 32-bit applications, they would be here. 64 just contains uh, this one file, I don't know what it is really. But what library is, is it contains all the shared libraries needed by applications in the bin and sbin directories to boot the system. Or rather, it's where your libraries are kept, basically all the files, all the dependencies and all the files needed to make your applications run. So every time you install packages on Linux, additional libraries are automatically downloaded. You know, those lib files. Basically, this is where they're stored in library. And yeah, this is over here. I don't know what lost and found is, and I can't really access it without root, but I don't really care. Opt. So in opt, I have a few uh, program files that I did not install via my repository. These were installed manually. Lena Etcher uh, and FreeTube were installed as .dev. Java and Brave and Element were from PPAs, PPA repositories installed on my system. So anything you don't install via repository, you, it goes in the opt directory. This is where basically you can store add-on application software. Basically any software you install that's not managed by your system's package manager, like in my case Linux Mint, apt is my package manager. So anything that isn't installed through there goes into opt. Then proc is the processes folder where a lot of uh, system, system information is represented as files. So to give you an example, yeah, if I were to type in ps, it shows me some PID IDs for certain commands running. These numbers represent command, those PID IDs. So PID1 would be systemd. This is all the information on systemd right here. I think. Don't quote me on that. Root is your root folder. It's basically this folder, but it has it's a little deeper. Run is basically what's been running on my system since I turned it on. So it creates a temporary file for each of that. Though most temporary files for that are in the temp folder. These are all the temp files which will clean out once I reboot my system. Time shift is because I have time shift running on my system. These are my this is where my snapshots are kept, so I can access them here and you know back up my system from here. I don't know what SRV is. Um, I didn't really wasn't able to find much information really quickly on that. Sbin is basically it contains administrative administrative commands and daemon processes similar to bin, but I guess this is for the system rather than ones that I can use in CLI. Yeah, these are commands that can only be run by the root user, not a normal user, so I don't really mess with it too much. The sys folder is... It contains parameters for things such as tuning block storage and managing C groups. So it's basically another folder like dev where my device drivers and microcode are here. Like my firmware files, they're in sys. Kernel files. Hypervisor is empty, even though I do have hypervisor running. Yeah, you can just uh, find them in sys. If you, if you don't find it in dev, you'll find it in sys. That's the rule. Temp, yeah, temporary files. Var file, and you... Var file, I want to go over this first. This is basically... the. This is where variable data is kept. Usually your system logs and other systemd journals will be in var. Under the log file. As well as logs made by any other application in your system. It contains... It's a directory of data stored from various applications so if you had an FTP server running or a cups printer server it would store the logs in var so for example spool because I have a printer connected the spool is right here OTP is empty I don't know why that's there my mail here from Thunderbird is here cache the cache from all the applications running is here etc and then finally the user the user directory is basically a user version of the copy of the root directory it contains a lot of files found here however instead of system instead of these being used by the system these are for my current user Hedia so my games are stored here 
Um, local. I have a few. Yeah, this is basically data related to my local applications, like my games. It basically contains user documentation, games, graphical files, libraries, and a variety of other commands and files that are not needed by the system. These are user specific files, so you can find them in user. So for my user Hedia, a lot of my personal files would be here. Well, a lot of files that are made by application processes. My personal files are actually in home, Hedia, documents, whatever, but... User would be stuff related to my Hedia user that's, you know, just stored here like game installs, etc. Yeah, anyway, this video wasn't too in-depth, but that's all I really wanted to go over. I'll make a more in-depth video on this later on. But anyways, I hope you guys have a good one, and peace out.